this is not the cue. Well, there's not many of us today, but we're going to have fun, right? We're going to sing and we're going to dance, and we got Tony's going to give us a great talk today, so let's get at it. Sunday morning, and here we are, coming together from near and far. We're unity, and that's the way it should be. I got family waiting for me every Sunday at Unity. Unity, that's the way it should be. My, 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 we're so happy it's Sunday. This is our, our very own Unity Day. Along with all of our family, we're unity, and that's the way it should be. The sun is shining, and I am too. I feel so happy. How about you? We're unity, that's the way it should be. We're so happy that love abounds with the brothers and sisters all around. We're unity, and that's the way it should be. My, 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 we're so happy it's Sunday. This is our, our very own Unity Day. We're here. Belong with all of our family. We're unity, and that's the way it should be. We're unity, and that's the way it should be. My, my. Morning. How's everybody today? That's the best you got? It's Sunday. We're at Unity. Yay! Howdy doody to everybody on Zoom and anyone that's going to watch this later on YouTube. We are so happy that you have joined us. Ah, let's see. First order of business. Oh, the monitor's not working today again. Uh, turn off cell phones. If you have your cell phone with you, we appreciate if you would turn down the volume so that the ringer doesn't go off or the notification or something. Let's see if this, Ed, this was working earlier? Yeah, it's very delicate. Anyways, we, we got the screen. We'll get that fixed. Oh, and then it comes on. Thank you. Ask and ye shall receive. Okay, so welcome home. Uh, we believe, uh, many of us, that we are a family and that we've come home each Sunday. And what do we find when we come home? We find joy and love and kindness and some very curious people, people interested in growth and self-expression. We get connect together, we transform together, we evolve peace together, and unity has often been called a positive path to spiritual living. I like that. We're on a positive path. Spiritual living. We. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's a long weekend. I have a birthday coming up. I'm taking this week off. So I'm just all about fun today. <laughs> Let's have some fun. How young am I going to be? I'm going to be 67 on Tuesday. Hard to believe. <laughs> never thought I'd get here. And I also never thought, do you believe that I thought at one time I might take my life at 30 because I never wanted to be old? It's kind of fun. <laughs> Just gets better and better. And as Larry said to one of his students when he was teaching and he somehow talked about his age and they said how'd you get that to be that old and he said just wait <laughs> good advice 
Anyways, I digress. We have five basic unity principles, and it's good for us to remind ourselves and let other people know about those principles, and so let's affirm those together. Principle number one, God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. Number two, I am naturally good because God's divinity is within me and in everyone. Three, I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. Four, through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. And five, with some zeal, I do my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. We sure do. And some of that dif difference is being the change that, w that we want to see. We inspire other people to make a positive change uh, or difference in the world, and we do that by setting a great example. And we also, by providing fellowship and education for spiritual seekers of all walks of life, much easier to coexist, and we learn that we truly can coexist, even though we might see things just a little different. And uh, prayer with a prayer chaplain after service. Um, Dawn is not here today, so I will be the prayer chaplain after service. If anyone's looking for one-on-one -on -one prayer, I'll be between the goodies and the orange steps, kind of hovering, seeing where I should go. And of course, online we have always our wonderful Wilda uh, looking to pray with people that are online that would like individual one-on-one -on -one prayer. And now we're going to have some more music by the great Jim Chapman. Come on, Jim. Oh. Yeah. Well, when you said about Larry, my dad used to say about getting, not my dad, my grandpa used to say about getting older. I said, Grandpa, how do you get to be so old? Just get up every morning. It seemed to work for him. He was 92 or whatever he was. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to do a song this morning. This is not really a, um, a maybe not a song that you would always hear at a, at a church service or a service like that. Uh, what's happening this is labor day and of course the kids are going back to school this week and um i i was just reminded of this tune well, i was thinking earlier this week what am i going to do and i thought you know there's not a lot of people here i know who have little children going to school this week but you may well have grandchildren and some of you may have great-grandchildren going to school this week and we all remember i think when we went to school when we were little and uh, as parents to sing sing your little ones go off for that big adventure the world's the big first really big adventure the most of the world. so this is a this is kind of a bittersweet song but as i went over it i uh, i thought this is this is something that needs to be said on sunday so here we go where are you going my little one my little one where are you going, sunny, my own? Turn around in your two, turn around in your four, turn around, your young man, going out my door. Ooh, little one, my little Little dirndls and petticoats, where have you gone? Turn around and she's tiny, turn around and she's grown. Turn around, she's a young wife with babes of her own. tiny turn around and they're gone turn around and they're gone but the memories are your own where are you going my little 
one, my little one. That's for all the little ones. And it makes me think of us that we turn around and we've grown a little bit spiritually and turn around again and we've evolved a bit more. But I don't know that we ever get there. But we like to keep trying. Okay. Where am I? Oh, prayer. Look at that. Look at this monitor and you'll see what you do next. So as you, most of you know, uh, we have a prayer box at the front of the room. We have a couple of fairly new people. So Unity of London, or sorry, Unity is part of Unity Worldwide Ministries. And Unity was founded over 130 years ago based on affirmative prayer. Um, we had a great history last, in, last week, I believe it was, yeah. And uh, about Myrtle Fillmore uh, affirming prayer over her body and healing herself of tuberculosis. So if you have someone in your life that you would like to additional prayer for, we welcome you to come up to the front of the room, uh, put their name on a piece of paper, put a number of names on a piece of paper, uh, put it in the prayer box, and that those people will be prayed over here for 30 days by our prayer angels and then sent on to Unity Worldwide for more prayer. So it's a wonderful way to make a difference. And, um, of course, at any time, you can call 1-800-NOW-PRAY to receive prayer uh, one-on-one or share that number with someone else that might be looking for prayer. But now we will go into some prayer, I believe, is the next slide. No, nope. anyways. So I invite you to become comfortable in your seat and close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. And have a nice couple of deep breaths and as you breathe in know that you are breathing in all that is good and as you exhale feel your body relax your shoulders drop and just let go of the busyness of life you can pick that up later we're just going to be here together connecting our hearts and connecting with spirit mm -hmm. And during this prayer, we hold also in prayer unity ministry in motion and unity.org. Unity All spiritual gatherings that are happening today, uh, the many paths to the one and only God. And I'll pause with a bit of silence so that you can whisper the names of anyone else you would like to include in our prayer. Beyond our members and our friends and our families. And today as we start September, the power of the month is order, divine order, represented by an olive green color. And we know that everything is always unfolding with divine order. So amongst the chaos that we see today in the world, we also see divine order, knowing that each and every person is a part of this thing called life. Each and every one of us say an expression of the one and only God. Each and every one of us doing our part to teach each other about love about order, about understanding, mostly about love. And so as we have our hearts gathered today, we imagine that love in the room growing and expanding and leaving this room and going beyond unity of London, beyond London, and we imagine a world, an entire universe, wrapped in our love. And we smile because we know we are healing the world with our sharing of our love. 
We see hearts being opened. We see people that feel alone feeling our love. And we truly do see a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of our shared spiritual awakening. And so it is, and so we let it be. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, now George is going to come and read the daily word for us today. Watch your step, George. Good morning. The word for today is togetherness. Togetherness enriches my soul. So much of modern life involves time alone and solitary effort. The more conveniences I accept, the less time I may seem to have. When I find myself spending too much time alone, it's good for me to invest time and effort in my relationships. Togetherness is a way to remember life is about more than work and busyness, and I am part of something greater than myself. Time spent with others blesses and enriches me. It calls me to share of myself and remain open to others' journeys and ways of looking at life that I may not have considered. Togetherness is a balm for my soul, a way of feeling presence of God reflected in those with whom I share this wonderful planet. I am part of the wondrous human family, and I celebrate our togetherness. From Romans 12, verse 5, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. Tony is giving the talk today, and Tony is a lifelong student, teacher of spirituality, metaphysics, and abundance manifestation. He's an experienced mentor, speaker, and trainer, and the author of Using the Law of Attraction. Tony's been active in Unity since about eh, 2012. That's a long time. And has been past president and so on. With his message, even more good vibes, please join me in welcoming speaker Tony Orvedis. Thank you, George, and good morning, Unity of London. Sixty-seven syllabi. I vaguely remember what it was like way back then. <laughs> so today's message is entitled, Even More Good Vibes. It's the third in a four-part series on becoming the best version of you that you can be. Now, if you remember, and I'm sure you don't, it was originally going to be a three-part series, but there was so much good stuff on the subject that I wanted to share with you, I figured, what the heck, I'll give him an extra shot of good vibes coming up in three weeks. Now, in part one of the series, all based on the book, Good Vibes, Good Life by Bex King, way back in May, I shared Bex's observations about self-love, the law of attraction, vibration, positive lifestyle habits. In part two, in June, I talked more about self-love, about making yourself a priority and accepting yourself as you are. Today, the message is all about manifesting goals using mind work, about beliefs, positivity, affirmations, intentions, visualization, and goal setting. And I'll try to make it very simple, just like Bex does in his book. Now, you've probably heard this quote, Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. It's by Napoleon Hill, and it's very, very true. Beliefs are fundamental when it comes to manifestation. 
when it comes to creating the life of your dreams. If you don't believe in something, you'll rarely see it in your life. Here's another good quote. Your mentality is your reality. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. That one's by Henry Ford. In his reality, he talks about it's based on individual perception. And our perception of the world is rooted in our personal beliefs. And those beliefs are individual truths that build our subjective realities. Now, all human beings are basically belief systems. And a belief is a feeling of certainty about a particular thing. It's a passive knowing. We live our lives based on the beliefs that we have acquired through our experiences and through our accumulated knowledge. Consequently, each of us views the world differently. Your mentality forms your reality. So the next time someone tells you you're being unrealistic about your goals and to come back to reality, remember, it's only their reality they're talking about, not yours. Believing in something is the key to seeing it. If you don't believe in it, well, it's not true to you, so it won't be in your reality. Remember Wayne Dyer? As he said, you'll see it when you believe it. And as we know from the laws of vibration, attraction, and mind action, when we believe in negative things, we experience negative things. Charles Fillmore wrote, a thought held in mind produces after its own kind. So these negative experiences we have continue to reinforce our initial beliefs making us even bigger believers in them. It's like a vicious circle. So an unhappy truth becomes even truer unless you decide to change your beliefs. Now, it would be nice to change your beliefs overnight, wouldn't it? But this is an astoundingly difficult thing to do. Our beliefs are deeply embedded in the soil of our subconscious mind. We live with them daily. And the first step is to identify which of our core beliefs limit our potential and do not empower us, and which we want to change. When you confront your restricting beliefs, you discover that you believe what you do because of what you've been told by someone in authority, someone you looked up to, a parent, an educator, the government, your minister, rabbi, imam, maybe your priest. Don't spend your life being imprisoned by these belief systems that limit your potential and prevent your dreams from coming true. Your beliefs are like a tinted lens that you look through, that colors your world. You need to escape and get rid of those mental limitations and beliefs that do not serve you. Now, it's important to understand your subconscious mind. It's your subconscious mind that's responsible for your beliefs. All that you've perceived in your life is a result of what you accept as true in your subconscious mind. Now your conscious mind is like a gardener and your subconscious mind is the deep fertile soil. Seeds of both success and failure can be planted in this soil and your conscious mind chooses what seeds it will plant. Now, most of us allow both good and bad seeds to fall into this soil. And that means the limiting or negative thoughts are constantly taking root in your subconscious because they're repeatedly sown there. Positive thinking is the act of choosing thoughts and actions that support you rather than hinder you and it brings the best outcome in any situation. It's the act of choosing thoughts that empower us over those that limit us. One thought restricts you, the other moves you closer to what you actually want. Changing your focus to what can be done rather than what can't be done is absolutely critical. Every great accomplishment in the world has grown from the idea that 
it is possible. Every single one of your thoughts is helping you move forward in life or holding you back. Positive thinking is about favoring the one that moves you forward. And it's never too late to change your thoughts and reshape your beliefs to support rather than hinder yourself. If you can't change the situation, change your perception of it. That's where your personal power is. Either be controlled or be in control. Now, our brains are very clever. They want to make life easy for us and to do as little thinking as possible. So the brain is optimized to make subconscious decisions based on previous emotions attached to experiences. It's called autopilot. And this autopilot behavior, created by repetition, allows us to move through our day without having to retain processes. It's like not having to think about our driving and without having to think about all the details of daily life. However, since our subconscious mind has no awareness, it can unwittingly hold us captive to unhealthy behavior as part of that autopilot reaction. You come, become conditioned to react in a way due to past experiences, and you don't question this reaction. Why don't you question it? Well, because you lack awareness. But you're not your thoughts. You are the witness of each of your thoughts. By cultivating an awareness of your thoughts, you can learn to make better decisions as to how to act. How you perceive an event determines how you experience it. Events are neutral, but we give them specific labels, don't we? So when an event that you think is negative occurs, pause. Observe your thoughts. By doing so, it makes the unconscious mind conscious, replacing thought with awareness. Only once you notice your thoughts can you make a good choice as to how to respond. This is the practice of living consciously, learning and reconditioning the mind so you can have more freedom to be who you really are. It's not a quick process, but with dedication, it will allow you to shift from a cycle of negative thinking to a new mode of positive thinking. In short, rather than trying to control external events, concentrate on controlling how your mind responds to them. One thought. One thought is all it takes. You're only ever one positive thought away from a more desirable outcome. Now maybe you've heard about chaos theory. It's a field of study in mathematics with applications in physics, biology, economics, philosophy. It suggests that even a tiny difference in initial parameters can lead to complex and unpredictable results. Some call it the butterfly effect. The flapping of a butterfly's wings in the Amazon causes tiny atmospheric changes that, over a certain period of time, could affect weather patterns as far away as, I don't know, St. Thomas. So, if we change just one thought to a more positive one, and we really believe it, we can change our whole perception of the world. And this new perception has the power to change outcomes simply by changing your thoughts and beliefs. As Mike Dooley says, thoughts become things. Choose the good ones. And these thoughts that you choose can be expressed verbally. What you verbalize will eventually materialize. You have the power to talk aspects of your reality into existence. Never underestimate the power of affirmations. Sylvia mentioned it earlier this morning. Affirmations are positive statements that describe what you wish to achieve. Simply saying something over and over, repeating it regularly with great conviction, creates a deep belief in your subconscious that that statement is true. Affirmations and negations are a large part of unity, and I've talked to you about them before. 
Repeating affirmations is a conscious process of sending instructions to your subconscious mind. And once these beliefs are planted, your subconscious mind will do everything it can to bring those ideas into reality. It's like writing instructions into your computer. A computer program to carry out a process for you. Once the lines of code are entered, the program can run automatically to achieve the desired result. You need to add substance to your affirmations before you repeat them, since it gives them greater power. Saying something out loud, just like you really mean it, can completely change your state of existence. Just don't do it in public, that's all. <laughs> Affirmations should be in your own words. Say them in your own voice, as if you're sharing facts with a friend. And only repeat positive statements. Don't recite what you don't want, something which you resist. ain't working. No. Ah, there you go. Because what we resist persists. Because the energy we express in avoiding something comes back to us. So state your affirmations in the present tense. Say them like you mean them, because if you act as if the goal is already truth, your subconscious mind will believe that it is and will act accordingly. Now let's talk about setting intentions, about defining your goals. If you're unsure about what you want, you end up with a lot of things you're unsure of. So before going after your goals, know what you want. You need to be clear about whether you want something or you don't. If you're confused about your intentions, the results that follow will reflect that confusion. Setting the right goal has to reflect what you deeply desire, not what you think you would want. Your goals should reflect who you are as a person. Now, once you make an intention clear, the universe will work in miraculous ways. When you put out what you want out there, the manifestation process begins and things start to unfold in your favor. Your dreams start coming to life. You are the author of your future. Don't just verbalize. Write about what you desire. Live your story. Now there are numerous examples, studies, remarkable stories about people who wrote down their goals on paper and ended up manifesting them even years later. When you write down your goals, you turn your intentions into something tangible. Define them in detail, and they will help you stay focused so that you don't lose your way. Doesn't matter if you use a pencil or a pen. The act of writing down your goals on paper rather than typing or keyboarding them on a screen creates a magical impression in your mind. When you reread these goals in your own handwriting or printing, this impression on the mind deepens, giving greater force to your goals. Now, it's important to write these goals down directly as you wish them. Don't restrict yourself or write them in a way you think is correct. Be true to yourself. Write them in the present tense as if you've already accomplished them, just like you would with your affirmations. Your subconscious mind will choose the path of least resistance in order to manifest those goals. Remember, always write your goals down from a positive perspective. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Write them exactly how you would say them. Use your own voice. You don't need to use fancy terminology. These goals are to be understood by you and you alone. Write them in a way that you connect with easily. You shouldn't have to try to translate them in your head. Also, be specific. Write down as many details as you can. The clearer the goal, the clearer the outcome. Remember, the subconscious mind is working from a set of instructions. 
And the outcome can only be good, only as good as the instructions that you provide. Set goals you feel confident about. And the best way to build confidence is to start with little goals. Once you achieve them, you go for the biggies. Once you've defined and written down your goals, say them out loud every day, just like your affirmations. What becomes real in your mind will become real in your life. Imagine it to live it. Now, visualization is the process of creating an experience or intention in your mind before you have it in your life. Global superstar Arnie Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, has made several references to visualizing his goals well before he actually achieved them. Michael Jordan, legendary basketball player, claims that he visualized the type of player he wanted to become way before he became one way before he found success. In fact, top athletes use visualization quite extensively. One of the best tennis players ever to grace our planet, Roger Ferdur, said that he regularly used visualization in his training regime. Note that these individuals trained and performed to perfection with their minds. Brain patterns that are activated when you imagine an action are remarkably similar to those that are activated when you physically perform an action. So visualization can actually train your brain for the event. When you visualize what you desire, not only do you align yourself to vibrate on the same frequency as the object of your visualization, but you also influence your subconscious. The same as when you perform affirmations. The brain, the nervous system, can't tell the difference between what's imagined and what's real. Amazing, eh? So take advantage of that. If your brain believes that the ideas you're feeding it are true, then your life will begin to reflect it as well. In visualizing, create scenes, not pictures. In those scenes, involve all your senses, taste, sight, touch, smell, hearing. Go into as much detail as you possibly can. Live the experiences as if they were true in that precise moment. Get creative with your scenes. Really bring them to life by making them bright, colorful, loud, big. All you need to do is close your eyes and start creating. Create scenes that make you feel good. Now, Vex tells us that by using t this technique, he gets confirmation that he's doing it effectively when he starts to feel it, when he starts to feel tingly. That is, he begins to feel as if it's actually happening, and it fills him with excitement. If you find it hard to create visuals like Vex does, then you can create vision boards. I've talked about that in a previous message. They will help you clarify your goals, and you can place the boards in obvious places at home or at work to keep you focused on your intentions. And don't worry about how your goals will manifest. Otherwise, you'll begin to create limitations. Avoid thinking about the hows, the cursed hows. Just be certain about what you want, and the entire universe will rearrange itself for you. It will support you. It will provide you with the signs that you need to get to where you want to be. The universe helps us to create, or rather, to bring possibilities into our reality. It gives us signs to follow, sends us ideas to act on. It's up to us as to how we respond to them. As we come to the end of the message for today, here's a few final words from Bex. Some people, he says, when talking about the law of attraction, assume that your dreams will manifest without any effort on your part. But you must take action on the thoughts and ideas that crop up. Click, click, in your mind. 
The inspirations the universe sends you are basically nudges from the source. It tells you, go this way, try this. Now, intention without action is just a wish. A goal only comes to fruition when you decide to pursue it. The universe is always supporting you. But you must be willing to do your part in the manifestation process. So stay tuned for good vibes in action in the fourth and final part of my message on the topic coming up on September 22nd. We'll talk some more about taking action, about playing your part in making your dreams come alive. In the meantime, stay positive, affirm loudly, write down your goals, set your intentions, and cultivate awareness. And with that, my friends, let's go into meditation. Today's guided portion is based on a reading from the Daily Word. Sit back, relax, close your eyes. Let my words be yours. I turn away from outer circumstances and I go within. I quiet the chatter of my mind. I now think of one of those peaceful places that exist in my mind. I imagine the breeze caressing my face. I hear the trickling stream. I see the trees swaying in that breeze. I smell the aromatic flowers. I taste the cold, fresh water of the stream. It's a beautiful, sunny, cloudless day. In this quiet state, I connect with my source. I begin to feel a settling calmness. I consider my life from this perspective. I remain centered and serene. I draw on my strength and my stability. And I now take a few minutes to visualize a wonderful outcome to whatever issue that may concern me. I now invite you to gradually come back to your world of earthly delights, secure in the knowledge that all is as it should be, as you co-created it through your prayers of decree, your visualizations, your intentions, and your affirmations. And so it is. Amen. Thank you so much, Tony. Another great presentation about good vibes. And uh, <clears throat> when you talked about being curious, I think this is where when we talk about in people, those of us here at Unity, we get become curious as to when a thought comes to us, you know, why am I thinking this? Where does this come from? Is this a good idea? 
because a lot of us did accept a lot of stuff in our little life that could be cleaned out, purged, get out of here. So, uh, and then uh, the how to, I remember, you might, reminded me of working with Bob Proctor, which is where I learned about writing on my goal card. I am so happy now that I have, or I am, and, and writing it out in, in present tense and then thanking the universe. Another great presentation. We're looking forward to number four. And guess what, Jim? You're back up again. Yay. More good vibes. Well, well, I don't know. Let's see. Can we get Jim's picture? Does Jim have a picture? I don't care about the picture. Well, this isn't working anyways. There we go. Look. Well, before I do anything, can I ask you to join me in thanking Tony for that wonderful presentation? That's great. That's great. I don't know about you folks, but for me, this room, this family, this unity is, is a place of magic. And it really is. And it happened today again. It happened today in Tony's speech. The magic struck again. Some months ago... <coughs> Sylvia made a comment in passing about something, and it stuck in my head. And I went away and wrote a song about it. And it's kind of a cute little song, I thought. And I played it for you, and you, you seem to like it. And uh, because of the uh, this being back to school time, and it does talk about school, I thought that maybe I would do it again. So I would do it again. And uh, that's fine. And then Tony started to talk. And he was talking about the, 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 your mind as the, the subconscious as being the, 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 the soil in which you plant ideas. And you can plant good ideas, or you can plant bad ideas, or they can just, the seeds can show up sometimes. And then he, as he was saying that, I thought, you know, there's a, that's really interesting, because that's kind of the, the, the mental process I went through in writing this song, because the song is about, the song is about making bad decisions in a way, and, and perhaps making decisions today that you, yeah, you're not crazy about tomorrow. And, and all the things that we do, the little, the little errors that we maybe make in our lives and how we deal with that. And I thought Sylvia summed it up really well when she said, I must have missed that day in school. But listening to Tony, I thought, you know, that line is also a response to those negative thoughts. Instead of, oh, I made a mistake, oh, I did this, well, this is wrong, I, you know, I'm, I'm, something's wrong with you. No, 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 you just missed that day in school. Now you can go and look that up and fill in that blank. So this is, uh, again, uh, to me, that's kind of magical when that comes together. This is, this is just, a, it's nothing serious. It's just a little fun scene. I try every day to be the best I can, being a good man's an uphill fight. Carry a heavy load to the fork in the road, but sometimes I just couldn't pick left or right. But I'm more good than bad, and it makes me sad. And I sometimes feel the fool. It doesn't make much sense, and my only defense is I must have missed that day in school. I get a most things right, but a few things wrong. Sometimes weak when I should be strong. So I remind myself when I'm confused, I must have missed that day in school. I just missed that day in school. Now I'm a lucky man in so many ways. My sins are only small, it's true. Maybe I'm slow, I don't know. I, I often wonder. What I ought to do, but I do my best and I own my mess and I am nobody's fool. I don't need a defense, I'm not really dense, I just miss that day in school. But every morning is a fresh new start, I'm learning every day. I got a good soul and I know I got a good heart, I know I'm on my way. Well, I won't give up and I won't give in to myself. I won't be true. My heart knows the difference from right and wrong. You don't learn that in school. You do not learn that in school. I get most 
things right, but a few things wrong. I'm sometimes a weak when I should be strong. Remind myself when I'm confused. I must have missed that day in school. I guess I missed that day in school. I know I missed that day in school, but I can make it right. Oh, thank you, Jim, for that song. And at least the the writer of the song, which I guess is you, is you were at school the day that they taught you to own your mess. So you know you you were there for some really good days. That's important. That's important to own your mess. And now we come to the time where we thank uh, and give our gratefulness for all that we receive, our time, people's time, their talents. Um, and now a little time for some treasures for those that haven't maybe given during the week, either online and by emailing to unityoflondon at hotmail.com or using the machine. We still like cash. <laughs> or checks. It's funny when I'm working now with young people, did you want to give a check for that? What's a check? And we are so grateful for all that we receive here at Unity of London. Renee's got it all. <laughs> oh, and uh, together we'll do our blessing. Uh, can you guys flip the slide? slide next slide, please? Slide away. There we are. <sighs> Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And just watch it grow. I found a pick. Oh. 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 <laughs> if you lost your pick, you can pick up your pick at the, on this stage. I told you, it's all about fun. It's going to be just a great week. Ah, special announcements. I think we have more than one. Uh, the September-October Daily Word uh, magazines have arrived. Uh, they're still only $10, and they're in the bookstore. So if you are one of those people that like to have the physical copy, please do pick one up today before they're all gone. And next... Um, a wonderful healing concert that's coming. So my goal is to have this room filled with 80 bodies, and I think we've got about 40 tickets sold. And so if you haven't got yours yet, I have some with me today. If you know someone else that might enjoy going, please let them know. I have some posters. If you're on Facebook and you're connected with either myself or Unity of London, as we post the poster, please share it with your people, your... Um, friends and family, the people that you're connected with on Facebook, and uh, let's really bring a room full of people to help Paul and Christina truly cause to have a, it's, it's meant to be a healing concert. It'll be wonderful music, but many hearts will be healed, I believe, by this music. Um, and if you miss this one, if you wanna see it again, you gotta go to Copenhagen. And $44 to come to here at Unity of London is a whole lot less than a flight to Copenhagen and a ticket, so, and you'd probably have to get a room too. Oh, and you'd probably want to eat. <laughs> Cheaper to come here. So uh, get your tickets today, uh, or if you know somebody that would want some, I'm sure, to, I'm happy to share them with you and, and get the money later. And then our next slide is about the next day, which is Saturday, September 14th. We have, uh, Amber is um, heading up a great day of events, uh, or the whole thing's called Meet the Healers Expo. So there will be wonderful people that, with different healing modalities that will be here. There will be speakers. Uh, I believe you can probably get a treatment or two. I don't know that you can get like a two hour massage, but um, you will be able to get some uh, great information and again about healing um, and be around some wonderful people. And uh, we again have, uh, I think there's still room for a couple of speakers, so if you, have someone that you go to see or that you know that is a 
Um, I, you'd have to talk to Amber about what we have, but we're looking, you know, a, uh, Reiki and massage and reflexology and um, psychotherapy, anything to do with healing. Um, we welcome those people to come and, and uh, have a spot or people that want to come and join, $10 at the door or they can buy their tickets in advance. And um, anything else you'd like to know, please see Amber. And then Wednesday nights, more music every Wednesday night from 8 p.m. to 9.30. Uh, Jim brings out some great people. And this week on September the 4th, the Marion Kernahan do, 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 Dulce? Dulcimer. That's it. Oh, it's really easy now. Dulcimer. The Marion Kerrigan Dulcimer Band. And uh, Jim would love to have everybody out. And again, you can e-transfer Jim Chapman at rogers.com, $10, or you can just bring cash at the door. And then what's next? Oh, I jumped. Oh, now it's working. Some. You'll do the slide? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so now we're at our prayer for protection. I had to, I had to go through the filing cabinet for a minute here. <laughs> so let's, let's affirm that together. The light of God surrounds me. I am the light. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love. The power of God protects me. I am the power. Where the presence of God watches over me. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. Yay, God. And now we'll have our peace song. We gather around. So as you go about your week, stay positive, and if you've got a negative thought, get curious about it, and then kick it out. <laughs> have a great week, and we'll just have some words for Tony. Yay. So is there anyone in the room that would like to come up, and Nancy's coming up, to uh, probably thank Tony, say some great things, yep. tell us about the